Hi, this is Scott Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, I'm going to be kicking off a series that's going to extend throughout the month of February and probably a little bit beyond that, and this is going to be devoted entirely towards extending the range and performance on your HTs. And I'm going to be talking about a number of different ways that we're going to do that. And we're going to start off by just looking at what you can do with just a standard bone stock HT with a standard factory antenna and a few simple things that you can do in terms of how you're actually operating that radio in the practical sense to not only extend your range, but improve your transmit signal just by how you're operating. And then from there, we're going to look at some of the different technological solutions that you can do to increase the performance on your radio, such as uh, replacing that factory antenna maybe with a longer whip or a, uh, a better made antenna in the shorter format. We're going to talk a good bit about that. When it comes to these antennas, we are going to be uh, looking at the difference, for instance, between a factory antenna and one of these aftermarket antennas. And I'm going to be doing so by using not only simple um, meters and gauges to check that performance, but also some more advanced stuff. And we'll actually be looking at uh, computer generated profiles of the antennas that are that are generated by this rig expert uh, analyzer onto a computer screen. And we can look at different uh, different ways in which the the antenna performs across a wide spectrum. And you can see just at a glance um, where some of these antennas are remarkably good and also where some of these antennas aren't as good as you thought they might have been. So we'll be getting into a lot of revelations there. Um, then we're going to be talking about how we can hook these HTs up to larger antennas for greater performance, such as this omnidirectional GMRS antenna made by uh, Tram uh, Browning. Well, it's kind of a dual branded thing there. And then some other stuff where you can uh, you can do an amazing number of things with directional antennas. And uh, in, in this case, an interesting directional antenna that's also very compact. It actually folds down, fits into a very small package, but can dramatically increase the range of your HT by uh, producing a directional uh, signal rather than an omnidirectional signal so that you can either transmit a full wattage and get increased range that way or turn that wattage down and get a little sneaky by uh, using just the amount of power you need to make the connection and also narrowing that signal path down to a specified path wherein no one's going to detect that unless they're along that pathway. So we're going to talk about all kinds of cool stuff. We'll also talk about different types of flexible antennas, uh, antennas that you can make out of uh, coax cable, um, a, a, a number of cool things that you can that you can do. But the main thing is just kind of getting away from uh, some of the old wives tales that I hear out there because my impetus for doing this series of videos is really based a lot on stuff that I'm seeing on a daily basis um, on things like uh, Facebook user groups, for instance. And, and every time I, I see some of this stuff, I make a mental note, and in some cases I'm actually making physical notes on some of the same questions that I keep seeing popping up over and over and over again. And I'm also taking note of some of the just wildly ridiculous uh, responses I see to some of these questions. Now, I have gotten many, many times, I've gotten fantastic information off of Facebook user groups, and I'm not saying they're not a valuable tool. What I am saying is they're populated um, by some people that I, I sometimes wonder if they're spreading some of this information in a malicious sense. I'll give you, give you a really quick example um, of one I encountered just a, a few days ago, and it ended up coming up with a conversation that I had with a guy who was directly affected by this bad advice. And it had to do with feed line for an antenna. And this guy pops up on a Facebook user group and he says, hey, uh, I've uh, local county, um, I, I guess it was part of their, their uh, uh, equipment surplus section. They, they said, yeah, they're selling RG6 cable and it was like pennies to the foot. Uh, is this good to use for radio antennas? And the answer to that is no. And I'll tell you why. Um, Pretty much all antennas work on the principle of 50 ohm feed lines. So something like an RG58, an RG8, and, and so on down the line. That's all 50 ohm cable. RG6 is not intended for radio. RG6 is video cable, and that operates on 75 ohm. Now, there are some cases where you might get away with it and get a signal out, but it is by no means ideal, and in some particular bands, particularly VHF, it's not going to work at all. Uh, you will get a signal out. That signal will be absolutely awful. 
But in answer to that question, there were six or eight people who said, no, bad idea, don't use a 75 ohm cable. Then one guy breezes in and says, I use 75 ohm all the time for my GMRS applications. It's good to go. So what if this guy runs with that and says, well, hey, this guy says it works for him on GMRS, so it's probably going to work for me. Um, it might, but like I said, the results you're going to get off of it are going to be awful. You're going to have uh, uh, poor signal quality. Your SWR is going to be all over the place. It's, it's going to be a mess. But that's the kind of stuff I see on a constant basis is just really oddball questions. And the other one is, and, and really the main impetus for this is, undeniably the number one aside from how do i get a gmrs license the number one uh, question that i see asked particularly again amongst the gmrs community is how far will my radio transmit well that's what this is all about we're going to talk about the how far you can do and i am not going to use that term by the way um, we're going to be talking about distance maxima and in particular we're going to be talking a lot about what's called maximum achievable range with your radio and that is always situational because the answer to the question every single time when someone says how far will my five watt um, uhf radio reach and i'm not going to limit this to gmrs because this question is asked again by ham radio people as well a little less so um, because they had to know that information in order to get their ticket to, you know they had to pass the test so they had to know some of this stuff ahead of time so that doesn't get asked asked as often but with gmrs a lot of this stuff is coming up and it's not meant to be a slight it's not meant to be derogatory it just is what it is there's a lot of people that are getting call signs and they're getting radio equipment and they really don't know anything about radio that's fine that's what this is about that's what this series is about is kind of my attempt to educate you in the in the simplest sense i'm not going to get too deep into the tech of things um, I'm not that kind of guy anyway. Uh, I know how, how this stuff works. I'm, I'm not particularly interested in doing things like winding my own torrid coils and stuff like that. If I can buy it, I just buy it. That does irritate some ham guys. I'm sorry, I can't do anything for you on that because that is my personality type. I'm more of a pilot than a mechanic, okay? I want to I wanna use the gear, make it work. If it doesn't work, I'll see if I can fix it. If I can't fix it, I'll take it to someone that can. Um, I'm more interested in, in the whole intent of this channel, if you'll probably notice if you see more than a few videos, has a lot to do with how to use the radios and how the radios work for me in my own experience. I don't really get too deep into the tech side of things, again, because I find it intensely boring. And in terms of watching videos, there are people that would probably rather watch paint dry than watch something like that. Sorry, just is what it is again. So, um, what I'm like I said, I'm going to be focused on keeping it simple, keeping the concepts simple, and keeping the concepts pretty reasonable. And again, getting back to that answer, how far will my radio transmit? The correct answer on that always is it depends. It depends, and why it depends is what I'm going to talk about in the next video. And we're going to actually talk about maximum achievable range of a factory radio with a factory antenna being held by two guys. That are six feet tall. So with that, look for that information in the very next video. And this is again the intro video. So I'll go ahead and bring it to a close at this time. Thank you for watching and or listening. And this next video should follow pretty shortly after this one. So have a wonderful day. This is Scott from Visalia or <laughs> KS6DAY. Uh, Scott from Visalia, Southwest Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day. Really botched that ending. Sorry about that, guys. Take it easy.